Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on factorising quadratics of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we've previously seen how to factorise quadratics where we didn't have a number in front of the x squared, so where we had say, I know, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now when we have a number in front of the x squared, like a 2 here or a 6 here, then it does become a bit more difficult. If I was to pick one of the few things in um, school maths that I find students forget the most, it would be this. And I think it's perhaps because it's quite methody. There's quite a lot of method to this. So do pay careful attention. Now let's just write this out and I'll show you the steps. Now, when we didn't have a number in front of the x squared, do you remember that we found two numbers that added to give the middle number, the 7, and multiply to give the last number of 3. Now it's quite similar, we still find two numbers which add to give the middle number 7. So I'm going to put a little plus here, and we need two numbers that add to give 7. But this time, instead of multiplying to give the last number, we actually want them to multiply to give the first times the last number, so 2 times 3, which is 6. I'm going to put a little time symbol here in a circle, and 6. So we need two numbers that add to give the middle number 7, and multiply to give the first times the last number 6. Some teachers call this the AC method, because remember this is the A, this is the B, this is the C, so the A is 2, B is 7, C is 3. And we need two numbers that multiply to give A times C, or AC, and that's why they call it the AC method. So they add to give the B, and they multiply to give AC. So, let's think about numbers which multiply to give 6. Well, we've got 3 and 2 multiply to give 6, but they don't add to give 7, do they? Or we've got 6 and 1. They multiply to give 6. Do they add to give 7? Yes, they do. So once we've got those two numbers of 6 and 1, what we do is we do something called splitting the middle term. So we split this 7x into those two numbers, the 6 and the 1. So 7x could be written as 6x plus 1x. Or it could be the other way around. 1 times 6 would also work. And then we can split the 7x into plus 1x and 6x. So obviously we still need to have the x on here because if we just had plus 6 plus 1, that would be 7. It wouldn't be 7x, would it? And we've still got these other things here. So we've got the 2x squared and we've got the 3. So this is called splitting the middle term. Now the next step is to factorise each half as expression. I call this pairwise factorisation. So let's underline each half. So I'm going to write factorise each half. So we just see what's common to each of these to factorise this first half. What's common to 2x squared and 6x? Well, 2 and 6 both have 2 in common. And x squared and x, well x squared means xx, and that is x. They both have an x in common. And let's open a bracket. And then 2x times what is 2x squared? Well, it's x, because x times x is x squared. And 2x times what is plus 6x? Well, it's plus 3. Now, once you've done that, leave a gap and then duplicate this bracket. So we leave a gap and duplicate that x plus 3. And then we factorise this in the same way. We just work out what times x plus 3 is x plus 3. Well, it's just 1, isn't it? And make sure that you put either plus or minus here, because otherwise, if you didn't put plus here, then this would all be multiplied again, and you don't want that. You're adding one lot of x plus 3 here. Yeah? Now, the final step is to see, well, what's common to this half and this half? Well, they both have an x plus 3 in common, so we're going to factorise that out as a common term. Open a new bracket, just as we did before, and then we say, well, x plus 3 times what is 2x x plus 3? Well, it's 2x, isn't it? x plus 3 times 2x is 2x x plus 3. This might be a bit confusing because you're not used to factorising out a whole bracket. And then we say, well, x plus 3 times what is plus 1 x plus 3? Well, it's plus 1. And if that step confused you, then just use this bracket here, the bracket you've got here, as one of the brackets. And anything outside of that bracket, so the 2x and the plus 1 are both outside this bracket here, that becomes the other bracket. And then we're done. If you want to check that, you could always expand this out and just check that you still get that. Now let's apply this same method to the second one here. Let's write this big. Again, we find two numbers which add to give the middle number, which is minus 19, don't forget the minus, and then multiply to give AC, so the first times the last number. 
6 times positive 10 is 60. And again, let's consider numbers that multiply to give 60. Well, it could be 60 and 1, but they don't combine in any way to make minus 19. Could be 30 and 2, again, don't combine to make 19 in any way. What about 15 and 4? Well, they do add to give 19. Now, let's think about the signs at this point. If they multiply to give a positive number, either both the numbers were positive or both the numbers were negative. Now, if they add to give a negative number, then they must have both been negative. So it's actually going to be minus 15 and minus 4, because look, those add to give minus 19. And then when you multiply them together, negative 15 times negative 4, negative times negative is positive, it'd be positive 60, so that works. And they could go either way around, it doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer. So we split the middle term as before. We split this using the two numbers, so minus 15x and minus the 4x, and fill in the remaining terms. So we've got 6x squared, we've got the plus 10. And then the next step, remember, is to factorise each half. So I underline each half and then see, well, what's common here? 6x squared minus 15x, or 6 and minus 15, they both have 3 in common. And both the x squared and x have x in common. Let's open a bracket. 3x times what is 6x squared? Well, it's 2x. And 3x times what is minus 15x? Well, it's minus 5. Then, as before, we leave a space duplicate the bracket and then think well what times 2x minus 5 will give you minus 4x plus 10 well it's minus 2 isn't it because minus 2 times 2x is minus 4x minus 2 times minus 5 is positive 10 and then the very final step if you want to do it the quick way this time remember this is one of the brackets so 2x minus 5 and the other bracket is just everything outside of it so the 3x and the minus 2 and that is the final answer.